Hey there, awesome physics students. Let's talk about circular motion. Um, you may recall in a few videos ago that we talked about acceleration can occur due to two different changes in the velocity vector. One could be a change in the magnitude of the velocity vector, that's a speeding up or a slowing down. The other could be a change in the direction of the velocity vector. And this, today, we're going to talk about acceleration in circular motion due to a change in the direction of the velocity vector. And this is where you see really motion diagrams really helpful. Um, so let's think about a scenario where, let's say you're driving in a car in a circle at constant speed. So forget about the speeding up or slowing down. It's just a direction change at this point. So let's say you're going in that direction. And with a motion diagram, remember that we want to plot the position at different points along the motion. So let me just do that. These are equal time intervals. Uh, along the motion. And the velocity vector then points uh, between those two points because it follows the displacement. Okay, so let's say this is the initial velocity and this is the final velocity. And we want to think about the change in velocity from those two, um, over those two segments. Uh, the reason we want to think about that is because remember that the acceleration is defined as the change in velocity over time which is just uh, change in velocities v final minus v initial as vectors over the time interval. So if we can find out what the change in velocity vector direction is, that tells us the direction of the acceleration vector. Okay, so we want to take v final minus v initial. So let me just take v final here and draw that there. And then I want to take v initial, but I need negative v initial. So I'm going to flip the direction and then put that at the end of v uh, final, it's v initial vector. And the change in velocity vector goes from where I began to where I end. So this is delta v as a vector. And that's going to be along this direction. And so at this point, the change in velocity vector delta v points that direction. And we can do this again for several other parts of the circle. So let's do it for this segment here. This is v final, and this is v initial. And again, I want to take v final minus v initial. So let me take v final here. And I want to take v initial and flip it, and then place it at the end of v uh, final. So this is negative v initial. Sorry, this is negative v initial here too. Um, and delta v is going to be where I start to where I finish. So that is delta v, the vector. And so for this point here, that delta v is going to point that way. You notice both of these point towards the center of the circle. We even have a word for this. It's a fancy word. You can use it to impress your friends here. Uh, it's centripetal. And what does centripetal mean? It just means center-seeking. It's just a Latin phrase meaning center-seeking. All that does is it tells you that the acceleration points towards the center of the circle. So A points toward the center of the circle. Okay, and that's all this word means. It, it, it doesn't, there's not a new, it's not a new type of acceleration. It only tells you the direction, okay. Um, the magnitude of this uh, acceleration, if it's traveling at constant speed, is just given by v squared over r. And so, uh, I'm not going to derive this in this video here, but this is a useful thing to know, at least. Um, Keep in mind, this is acceleration due to direction change only, not a speeding up or a slowing down. And think about when you would experience this in real life, right? You're driving in a car. Let's say you're going in one of those uh, cloverleaf uh, scenarios uh, trying to merge into a highway. And it, you know if you go at a faster speed, you're going to feel that acceleration to a greater degree because your acceleration is going to be greater. Alternatively, if you travel, if you turn into a tighter turn, if you reduce the radius of your circle that you're traveling in, you're also going to feel that acceleration bigger, right? Because a smaller r corresponds with a larger uh, term here, which will make, mean the acceleration will be larger, okay? So 
traffic engineers or people who are designing highways have to think about this in particular when they're designing a highway. How fast will people typically go be going? And then we don't want the acceleration to be too large because they'll fly off, their cars won't be capable of it and their cars will fly off the road and uh, they'll get fired and uh, people will die and that's terrible. So uh, let's think about this. So they're using physics to design roads, even things you don't think about uh, necessarily all the time. And a lot of thought puts goes into those. All right. 